of the team. Both 28 years of age. Jermell Trollo, three and a half months older than Tony Harrison. Harrison with the two inch height advantage, the reach advantage as well. Trollo, 31 and 0, 15 knockouts. Harrison, 27 and 2, 21 knockouts in his professional career. So it's Jermell Trollo and Tony Harrison coming up to the Hall of Fame ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen from Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, New York, it's Premier Boxing Champions on Fox, sponsored by MGM Resorts. Our co-main event of the evening is sanctioned by the WBC, the President Mauricio Sulaiman, along with the New York State Athletic Commission. Introducing our judges scoring from ringside, we have Julie Letterman, Ron McNair, and Robin Taylor. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing you first, the challenger, fighting out of the red corner, wearing tiger print orange and black trunks, and hailing from Detroit, Michigan. He weighed in at 153 and three quarter pounds with a record of 27 wins and two losses. He has 21 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his second attempt at a world title, please welcome the WBC number four ranked super welterweight contender, introducing Tony Superbad Harrison. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world champion fighting out of the blue corner, wearing maroon trunks with purple and white trim, hailing from Houston, Texas. He weighed in at 153 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 31 wins, no losses. 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight making the fourth defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the undefeated, defending, and reigning WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, introducing Jermel Ironman Charlo. I don't forget to charge, now to give instructions, Steve Willis. Okay, here we go. Okay, gentlemen, you both have the instructions in the dressing room. I want you to obey the commands and protect yourself at all times. Right now, we're gonna call them right here on the letters, and we're gonna call them on the letters here. Tap it up, let's go to work. Scheduled for 12 rounds. Jamel Trollo, the WBC Super Welterweight Champ, facing Tony Harrison. Trollo, one minute younger than his brother Jamal. Jamel lost a coin flip to determine who would fight in the main event tonight. So this is the co-main event. Jamel Trollo and Tony Superbad Harrison. Trollo undefeated 31 and 0. Harrison at 27 and 2. Harrison of the Tiger Print Trunks. Round one scheduled for 12. Kenny Alvin, Alex Lewis, Joe Gleason, and Freddy Antro coming to you from Barclay Center in Brooklyn, the PBC on Fox. I'm really anticipating a half all day this fight because I got to tell you, you've got two superbly conditioned guys, two guys that can really crack and are really fast, and they're both uh, power punchers, especially uh, Tony Harrison. He's really got a great right hand, formerly trained by Emmanuel Stewart, now back with his father, and uh, this could turn into a really, really good fight if somebody doesn't get caught early. I think this has a chance to be a, the fight of the night. He worked with Stewart at the legendary Croc Gym in his hometown of Detroit. Harrison telling us yesterday, I feel amazing. There's no pressure on me. Not a lot of people are giving me a shot to win. 
Well, he's from Detroit, and he's boxed that crunk, so he's got some good training. And right now, you know, he's taking his time. Both guys are taking their time. And, you know, feeding each other out like they should in the first round, not taking too many chances. Yeah, they're both patient fighters, uh, but I, I saw that uh, Jermell kind of came out of the shoot a little bit quicker than he normally does, trying to land that right hand, which fell short two or three times. So. Oh, yeah, he's intense. He's intense. He wants to land. He wants to go to work right now, but, you know, he's kind of biding his time right now. He's taking it easy, but he wants to go to work. I think he took an early shot at it, and now he's kind of settled into being a little bit more patient and trying to pick his shots here like he normally does. You see, they're both going to be good counter punches tonight. You get touched by either one of these guys. So, right there, right hand over the top from Charlo and uh, and Harrison countered with the uh, counter right hand. Yeah, that's what Harrison's looking to do. He looks like he's, he's ready to counter punch him. He wants Charlo to throw some punches. That's why the waiting game in the first round is it's really down to, you know, who's patient in it. This is the fourth title defense for our 28-year-old Jamel Trello. Sometimes, you, sometimes when you wait too much, you know, you're giving away the rounds. So you got to be busy. You got to do something in the first round. Yeah, you always want to win that first round, don't you? you want to give that away. Time winding down in. Round one here in Brooklyn. On the left, Jamal Charlo moments ago watching round one of this fight between his twin brother Jamel Charlo and Tony Harrison. Well, there you go. Uh, Jamel decided to come out. He put his hands up high, he put his elbows in, and he said, I'm, I'm walking to you right now. And uh, he, he let off with the combination. Didn't get a response from Harrison as of yet. But uh, he's got to do that more often. And he might, did the, might pay he off. He did the right thing, too. He came out with a double jab and moved forward. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, listen, both these guys are dangerous. You can't just jump into a, a slug match, you know, right, right off the bat. Here. you got to have a little bit of patience. See, but he's so fast. He goes so fast with that right hand. And if he follows it up with a hook and any hands are down on Harrison, you know, he could pay a big price early. But he knows that. The Charlo brothers so close. There's Bob Terry. The brothers hiding on the same card for the seventh time. It's, it's double distress for the mom. But, um, you know, I'm sure she's used to it. They've been fighting since the Tony Harrison comes from a family of boxers as well. He's a third generation pro. And his dad's in his corner tonight. And it shows. I mean, he's a very, very classic, you know, stance. Uh, hands up, close, good jab. Gets his hands back quick. But I got to tell you, the Jamel is also, he's, he can do it all. You know, he can squat, he can pivot, he's fast, he's got a great defense, and he can counter punch. He really does have it all. Clinics, has anything surprised you so far? Uh, Tommy Harris needs to throw that right hand a little bit. I, I haven't even seen that check hook, because I don't know that, I know that's a Kronk special. Something Mayweather perfected over the years. Right? Yes, he does it well. Mm -hmm. Shot. Jamal Charlo taking in the action as he prepares for his fight coming up next with Matt Corvall. Harrison's making this a little bit of a chess match. He's just he's not making it easy for, for Jermaine at all. He's, he's slipping punches and he's he's moving out of the way, pivoting, he's doing a nice job. Got a fight. Yeah, he did. And but you know. He, he said he needed someone to push his buttons, and that's what he's he's got his eye on. Right. He says he's the guy that really is the raw raw guy. If he needs it. His dad was a welterweight during his professional career. His grandfather Henry Hack 
Good defense. 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 Again, Jermell came out, you know, all pistons firing right now, and uh, Harrison, you know, was uh, slipping and sliding on the ropes, kind of evading most of the big punches. It's got to be a little cautious thing because you know, Tony's waiting for that counter punch, so it's got to be careful when he throws that right hand uh, against Tony because he's coming looking for that counter punch. Look at our up to the second stats. Harrison has. Landed 37 percent of his punches for that corner, 24 percent body shot there by Tony Harrison. And you're right, Tony Harrison has to pick it up a little bit more because Look he's going to let these Look rounds can. slide away, so we can't let, afford to let this happen. Round three scheduled for 12. Jamel Trollo, the WBC good 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 super welterweight champion. Making his fourth title defense. Follow <laughs> undefeated Harrison. Two defeats. He referred to them as mishaps. He also said it's the best thing that could have happened to him. He said it, it put me on Humble Street. I was knocking everybody out before that. And he lost to two great guys. I mean, he lost to uh, Jared Hurd and he lost to uh, you know, Willie Nelson by knockout, both in the ninth round later on in the fight. So, you know, this is where he seems to be vulnerable. And I think he's uh, worked to change that where he's got more left in the tank later on in the fight. We'll see. He won the first 21 fights of his career. Now 27 and 2. 21 by a knockout. See, Harrison's trying to throw some combinations here. He's trying to work it a little bit, but, but uh, the defense of, uh, of Jamel uh, Charlo is just superb. You know, he really blocks everything off, gets his elbows in and his hands up real well. Hard to get a clean shot on And, you know, I, I can see what Jamel's doing. He doesn't want to be the only one throwing punches out there, so he wants to, he wants to make Tony throw some punches so he can block and slip and throw some punches himself. Yeah, he's looking to open him up is what we're saying. Right? Yes. Now, both of them landed uh, a couple of shots here. Uh, uh, Harrison got in a little, a little bit of a right hand, and so did uh, Janelle. So it's starting to heat up a little bit. Final seconds, round three. Round four scheduled for 12 from Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Let's head over to Heidi Andrew with Tony work. Harrison's dad slash trainer, Ali Salam and Heidi. Thank you very much, Kenny. Coach, what did you say to Tony going into this round? Um, he's doing well. He's, he's boxing smart. He's doing everything real good. He needs a few more fakes and some body work now. Because he's every punch Charlo throw, he's throwing hard. And I can see him starting to slow up just a little bit. So we're going to stop throwing some body work and just being smart. Continue doing what we're doing. Behind the jab and good body work. There you go. There you go. Awesome. Thanks so much, Coach. Kenny, back to you. All right, honey, you saw that. Big left from Harrison. Now, Harrison told us yesterday, my jab will kill him. Guys, how do you think he's done with that jab so far? Well, I'll tell you what, he's it's, it's pretty accurate with it. He's pretty sharp. He needs to throw a lot more jabs because, he, to me, he's kind of slowing down a little bit. He needs to get in there with the jab and throw more combinations. Do you think he's slowing down, Lennox, or just being too cautious? Too cautious, too cautious. Slowing down, not throwing as much punches as he should. These, are, these guys are lightweight guys. They need to be throwing a lot more punches, but they're cautious of each other. It's a 12-round fight. We're in four, so you know it's they're gonna have. We got to give them a little time to heat up, but but they're but I think uh, um, Harrison's father said was correct. Somebody's got to start going the body a little bit because everyone's got their hands up good. They're, they're quite aware of the head punches. They both landed nine of 18 power shots in round three. Round four scheduled for 12 from Barclays Center in Brooklyn. The WBC Super Welterweight Champion, Jamel Charlo, at 41 and 0. Up against 27 2, Tony Harrison. You saw Jamel try for that rule. That, that up, he missed that left uppercut. You know, he, he's, they got to start trying something different than the yeah. regular punch. And they're opening up now. Yeah. But, you know, they're both dangerous guys. They've got to be careful. The first one to make a mistake, it may be over. Yes, I agree with that. They are being careful. It's a long haul, so you know. 
But, but right now, Jamal is starting to throw the hooks, the left uppercut stuff he wasn't doing in the first three rounds. So let's see if Harrison will reciprocate with some of his combinations like that. But they, they're going to open up soon enough. It's a real tactical chess match in the right now. And I like it. 15 seconds remaining in round four. more of the left jab. I, I don't think we really saw that left hook. It was at the very end of the round and, and Tony Harrison jumped in with the left hook. That's the one you were talking yes, about. Yeah, that's the one that landed. Let's check in with Heidi in Charlo's corner. Thank you very much, Kenny. Coach, Derek, it seems like it's been a little bit of a chess mess this far. What do you want to see more from Jamel? I want to see that. I want to see Jamel put the press on him, get a little busier, and put the press on him. So keep pushing him, keep pushing him back, and keep his hands up very high. Harrison stunned Charlo with that right as Heidi was chatting with Charlo's trainer, Derek James. Well, he was putting the pressure on all right, and he was throwing the body shots, opening up, and again, that's where you take your chances to get hit with a counter punch, and that's exactly what Harrison did. He came back with a right hand, and he actually uh, he stunned uh, Jumel for a second. But Jumel, he's, he's got a really good chin. He's coming back hard right now. And he's not going to let that bother him. He landed a great left hook. So Charlo comes right back. You know, I think it was a situation where he was just off balance and he just, just got caught off balance. You know, the right hand helps him get off balance, I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, listen, to be fair, you know, uh, you know, Harrison hasn't been thrown a lot, but the ones he has thrown have been pretty accurate, and the best weapon so far is his counter right now. Midway through, round five, scheduled for 12. Charlo looking to defend his WBC Super Welterweight title. On the left jazz by Harrison. See what Charlo's doing wrong. He's trying to throw the combinations in the middle of the ring. He should push Tony right back to the ropes and then throw that combination so he can't escape from this. That's exactly right. That's what uh, Joe James Strader was asking. He said, you know, put the pressure on him, keep, you know, backing him up. And, you know, if you back him up enough, they're going to end up on the ropes. And that's where he wants to put him. That's what you're talking about. And I agree with you. Right when he gets him up, this is what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. When he gets him on the ropes, this is where he got to, he's got to come to these combinations, even the body punches. You see, you throw that right hand against uh, Tony Harrison, he's going to always come back and counter you with that right hand or right up and down. Oh, the right hand. Tony Harrison got hurt there, definitely, because his knees bent or buckled. And then Harrison grabs hold of. The neck of Jamel Charlo. Final seconds. Round five in Brooklyn. Well, a flurry of activity in round five. Early in the round, it was Harrison connecting. Dip. Right there. This is why I said he was off balance. Well, here we go. It goes the overhand right. That hit that, that hit Tony on top of the head. And you know by experience, you get hit on top of the head, you, you can lose that equilibrium real easy. But the better shot, I think, was the counter shot by Harrison. That landed flush and he turned it over nice. Oh, yeah. And there is Terry Hit, mother of the Trollo twins. Jamal. Warming up during the minute break between rounds. And then he heads back to the television to watch his brother. Jamal getting set to face Matt Korbov in our next bout. <laughs> Round six scheduled for 12 here in Brooklyn. The PBC on Fox. Kenny Albert. The champ, Lennox Lewis, legendary trainer Joe Goosen, and Heidi Androl coming to you from ringside. Chris Myers, Ray Boo Boo Mancini, 
And Kate Abdul with us as well as Jamal is going to get back to the TV monitor in his locker room. And in the meantime, Jamel uh, Charlo just landed a beautiful straight right hand off the jab. And, uh, you know, definitely had a reaction from Tony Harrison. Official scorecard from Hall of Famer Larry Hazard. Larry has Charlo up 45-46 in the first five rounds. This is what I was telling Tony. You can't allow that to happen in the first couple of rounds. You can't allow the guy to win those rounds. You got to win those rounds yourself. You got to throw punches. If the judges don't see you throwing punches, they're going to give it to the other guy. The other guy. Larry has Charlo winning four of the first five rounds. Round six scheduled for 12. This is about the time that Charlo usually starts putting on real pressure against his opponents midway through the fight. And it uh, looks like he's going to step up, but he's got a real sharp Harrison in front of him. He's dangerous. And I think he knows it. I think he knows he's got a very solid right hand. And. Um, but I, I, but I still think he's wearing them down a little bit, and he's starting to impose his will. Harrison wearing the tiger print shorts. He loves his hometown of Detroit. He has a gym, super bad fitness. He recently hosted a grocery and toy giveaway, third annual. Well, so much for the community. Such a likable guy. I mean, you know, when we met him in the, uh, the fighter meetings, he's, he's personable, he's likable. And, you know, he can fight, so, you know, he, he's got a lot going for him, but, you know, he's up against a real quality champion right here in Jamel, who can do it all. And, uh, you know, he proves a fight in and fight out, and it's no different tonight. He's, he's definitely got the edge on Harrison right now. Yes, well, we met with Harrison, he's enthusiastic, confident, why don't you have quite the personality. Yeah, he does. He's, he, you know, he came in all smiles, he was happy. He couldn't wait to step in, and he said his, his two losses, those were claimed because he was basically overworked and he was clean, so that's what I call Toronto certainly the more serious of the two during our fighter meetings yesterday. Right. Round six in the books as we push it in to the corner of Jamel Toronto. Dropping the jab, though. You're taking the jab away from him. You see him now throwing it, right? He's looking for the one, one, two. So you get up, step up and take the right like people ask you to do, right? Pick up the pace, walk him down, mind the jab. He's walking back, boom. Keep the short shots on the inside. He does not like the body shots either, okay? Keep working behind the jab. Step over to your right, over the shoulder. The shots are going to come because he keeps. All right, everything else is good. Keep faking, I need some body work, okay? Give me a little body work when you can, when you see it, okay? When you see it, give me some body work. Outside of that, you're doing a good job. Keep your head moving, okay? Keep working smart. Touch that body. And hands up, walk them down. Do the EJ on the bed. Hands up, walk them down. Do the EJ on the bed. We saw that replay, they both had a really good jab, so Harrison's laying it harder. But, you know, he's going to have to do a little bit more than just land jabs and then occasional right hand. Yeah, I agree with that. that. He, he needs to box with a little bit more urgency mm -hmm. because he's letting these rounds slip away from him. A look at the number of jabs. We heard Harrison's corner wants more body shots. Only six of his 67 there you go. landed our body shots. And his trauma. Let's see he starts rolling like that. You, you can be in serious trouble. He's really turning the heat up right now. Harrison reacted to a, a headbutt. I think he got out of the stand in the eye of a headbutt. I want to see that on the replay. And then we saw a couple of left jabs from Harrison. And Charlo turned up the heat. That's right. Charlo seems, or Harrison seems to have recovered from whatever incident just happened there. And I think Lennox was right. He probably got a little bit of a headbutt. And a nice left hook there on the right hand. Or a thumb. Could have been. We'll see, right? Let's check in with Heidi. 
Thank you very much, Kenny. I spoke to Tony Harrison's father. He told me he wants him to slide, change directions, and he really wants to see more body work from him. Kenny? So that was the message from his father slash his trainer. Um, so Bob L, thanks, Heidi. Yeah, and, and the reason he's asking for that uh, for Tony is because really Jermel's not getting hit with anything besides a jab occasionally. So, um, you know, he's got to change up and do something different to uh, open Jermel up a little bit. And uh, otherwise, it's uh, it's Jermel all the way right now. And what you're saying when you say do something different, different combinations, throw different punches. Harrison, a terrific athlete, high school quarterback in Michigan. He has a couple of cousins in the NFL. Antonio Gates, Devin Funches. He's got the pedigree, so, you know, I mean, he's got to put it to use right now. Um, he's got to start taking chances, I guess. Like that. I mean, he's, just, he's got to fight Jermel right now. He can't really depend on He's not going to win this fight by boxing. I agree with that. Really, he should, he should be first. He shouldn't. He shouldn't let Jamel be first if he wants to win this fight. If you want to win a fight, you gotta be first. I would say if you can land a jab, you can land something else. And, you know, you gotta hook off that jab, throw the jab to the liver, just like Jamel just did. He threw the jab and he went right downstairs to the liver. So, you know, he's uh, Tony's letting this fight slip away a little bit. Final seconds, round seven. Oh, big left by Trey. As we head upstairs, check in with Chris Myers and Hall of Famer, Ray Boom Boom Mancini, guys. Yeah, and Jermel Charloway loading up on the overhand right, obviously ahead in this fight, as the challenger has to be more aggressive. Harrison thought, at least his corner, Ray thought that they had won the first round. They did not. Since then, you have Charlo well in control of this. Yes, after Charlo winning the fight, um, the close rounds, but he's winning each of these rounds. So he's probably up about five or six points, but the close rounds. What does Harrison have to do to turn this around? Well, he's got to stand there and fight him, just like he did at the end of that round. He's got to stand there and throw the left hook and the right hand. And he's got to throw it with bad intentions. Stay in the pocket and fight him. All right, the undefeated identical Charlo twins going at it. One fighting, leading in his title defense. The other sparring, getting loose, ready to take the ring. In just a moment following this, scheduled for 12, back to Kenny Ringside. All right, thanks very much, Chris. And you know it's difficult for Jamal. He would love to be out here in his brother's corner. Well, you know, <laughs> he can only fight for himself. And, and, and again, Jamal's winning this fight, but, you know, uh, you know, to have a really competitive fight here, just like Ray said, Harrison's got to start opening up and challenging. All right, the unofficial scorecard with Joe from Larry Hazard, our Hall of Famer and rules expert. Larry has Charlo up 68-65 through seven rounds. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that at all. But, um, you know, you, again, if, if Harrison, now he's, he's, he's starting to do the right thing. He's starting to press a little bit. He's holding his ground. you got to hold your ground and, and make a fight of it. Or otherwise, this is what's going to happen. It's going to be go to a decision, and he's going to lose a decision. Lennox, what adjustments do you feel Harrison must make? Well, I think he needs to go forward. He needs to really throw that double jab, like 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 Joe was saying. You got to throw a little bit more punches. You got to really go for it. Go for it like you want to win this fight. seems like he's scared to throw the punches because he doesn't want to miss. But he's got to throw the punches. You know, if you look at Charlo, Charlo's throwing the punches. He's, 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 he's not connecting sometimes, but at least he throws the punches and making the judges. Yeah, he's showing the judges that he wants to knock this guy out, that he wants to win the fight. Right, Jermaine Charlo has no problem uh, getting into a, a, a slug out here, yeah. right? He could have no problem with it. Ooh. Traded right hands there. That's more like a, a good luck hook from Charlie right there. Final minute, round eight. Scheduled for 12. Jamel Charlo, the WBC Super Welterweight Champion. And 
And Harrison should, should be circling a little bit more. You know, showing different angles. He can't just go forward and back. Don't get me money, and I think you're right. But more importantly, they got to start, uh, Harrison's got to start slugging. You know, right there, he threw a left hook and he picked it out instead of finishing that combination. He's got to do something oh, he, here. It almost like he stopped him in, in the middle of the combination. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't feel confident in his punches. There it is. Going to start doing that. So a nice left there from Harrison. Ten seconds remaining in round eight. in the books scheduled for 12 it's the pbc on fox in brooklyn as we check in with kate abdo kate uh, yes, sir. just a little bit of context to this fight, just to remind you that it was just three weeks ago on another PBC card that we saw Jarrett Hurd, the unified champ at 154, jump into the ring, uh, sorry, beat Jason Welborn. And as soon as that had happened, we then saw Jamel Charlo jump into the ring after that fight and get right up into Jarrett Hurd's face and tell him and remind him that he wants that fight. Jarrett Hurd has the titles that the Jamel Charlo ultimately wants to get. You can see the altercation there. It went on and on and on. Jamel Charlo very aggressive in that uh, altercation. Just saying once again, I want those titles that Jarrett Hurd has. Jarrett Hurd in the crowd tonight. We have seen him. We'll hopefully be speaking to him later on and see what he makes of this fight. The Jamel Charlo is currently fighting against Tony Harrison. It is uh, going to be very interesting to see what happens then. All right, that sure will be. Thanks, Kate. So, Jared Hurd on hand tonight here in Brooklyn. Well, one thing Jared Hurd will do is he will force a fight upon you. So, you wouldn't have this type of situation if Jared Hurd were in the ring right now. The situation is Tony Harrison is being very cautious. He's very, very selective with his punches. And it's not going to win him the championship of the world. I'm sorry. That's not going to happen for him tonight. If he doesn't take some chances, even if he gets stopped trying. Yeah, I agree with that. He's got to take those chances. Right now, he's just allowing. And on the other side, as we were listening in to Kate, Charlo in his corner was called we're trying too hard to knock out tony harrison well, you gotta try hard because he's not being given any opportunity to really get into a, a fight here he's got to work for every every punch he lands because of harrison's movement and lack of offense so yeah i mean he doesn't want to win by points he wants to win by a knockout Charlo wants to put in some work. That's what he said from the beginning. He wants to go to work. So this is the opportunity to go to work, and he's doing it. Round nine, scheduled for 12. Harrison has two career defeats, defeat. both via knockout in this round, in the ninth round. That was a great right hand by, by Harrison, but you saw what Jamel did. He just opened up his hands like, okay, is that it? You know, so, you know, again, it's going to take more than one counter punch. Charlo came in with the left and the right and got hit with the right. So that's what he has to be careful of when he's throwing those left right combinations, <laughs> keeping himself open. You've got to think about defense after that. We saw another combination from Tony Harrison. Under a minute to go in round nine. I think Tony Harrison's going to be very disappointed at the end of this fight and uh, be, be very uh, 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 angry that he didn't really do more work in this because he's not going to win the title game. Although he landed a nice little shot earlier in this fight. And Charlo landed a good right hand as just now. Yeah. He's pushing the action. I love that. I love the way he's pushing the action. This is what you got to do. Even though you win in the fight, you still push the action. Big left by Harrison. Ten seconds remaining in round nine. We head to the 10th here in Brooklyn. Jamel Charlo and Tony Harrison.
Well, guys, we're not here today to see the famous movie twins with Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger, or even the Olsen twins from Full House. How about the Guinness Book of World Records heaviest twins, the McGuire's? Jose and his twin brother, Ozzy Canseco. The Sedins, stars with the Vancouver Canucks, recently retired. Robin and Brooke Lopez, the Griffins of the Seahawks. Here tonight in Brooklyn, it's the Charlos, separated by one minute. Older brother, Jermall, on the right. Jermell on the left. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. Kenny, how did you fit into that? <laughs> Not a twin, but a triplet. Right. One of the barber triplets. Kenny Barber. <laughs> yeah. I'll be with Ronde tomorrow. Not too far from here at MetLife Stadium for the Jets and the Packers. I'd like to join you. Charlo's really stepping it up right now. He's moving forward. Wow. Yeah, he's definitely... Sh oh, good, good right hand. Good, good right hand. But missed the left hook there. I, I, you know, I, I think we're going to have to be resigned if this thing's going to go to a decision because nobody's... I mean, at least... You know, Harrison is not opening up here. He's going to play this defense all the way through to the end of this fight, it looks like to me. I know uh, Jermel is going to try to knock him out, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do it because uh, Harrison has still got a lot of energy. He's sharp. His defense is good, and he's just not going to allow himself to get knocked out. Let's check in with Heidi Andrew. Heidi. Thank you very much, Kenny. I spoke to Tony's father, and he told me that it's going to be all about the angles to win this fight. And he said when he makes him miss, he has to make him pay. Thank all right, thanks, Heidi. In Harrison's career, 29 bouts prior to this one, his average number of rounds has been four. Yeah, but he hasn't been fighting guys like Jermaine Trowell, so, you know, that, that's, <laughs> that's the biggest difference. You know, he's at, he's at a different level here with one of the great fighters of today. And believe me, this fight is going to do a lot for Charlo. He's going to learn a lot against the real slick, you know, Mayweather-esque type uh, fighter in here. He may not have the, the, the offensive uh, abilities of Mayweather, but he's certainly got the slickness of Mayweather. Okay. He's a great kid right there. It's hard to pin down. That's all there is to it. You know, you, I ask fighters all the time after a fight like this, I go, what would you do? If you had to do this over again tomorrow, what would you do differently? And they go, oh boy, I don't know, let me tell you. And I think that's what's going to happen with, uh, with Jamel. He's going to say, I learned a lot from this fight. Um, it, it, it'll just improve him. What do you think Tony's game plan was for this fight? Because I don't see no game plan. He's really just trying to counterpunch. He's trying to wait for that perfect shot. That perfect shot never comes. you got to work. Work and throw that perfect shot. You gotta throw that punches. <laughs> different combinations, different. You know, I didn't. I haven't seen no body punches from Tony Harrison at all. Well, I, I, I probably <laughs> believe that that Tony Harrison thought he was gonna find an opening somewhere along the line here where he was gonna hurt Jamel and then follow up on it eventually and make it work for him. But that hasn't happened. Jamel's just too smart of a fighter. He's too good defensively and offensively, so nothing really is working for Tony right now, except for survival. Final seconds, round 10. Let's look at some key moments from this fight. There you see Jamel getting things started. There's some counter punching from Harrison. And that's an overhand right that caught him on the top of the head. And Jamel, he's throwing that right hand. Oh, that's where he got caught coming in. That's where he should have been careful. Our unofficial scorecard. Hall of Famer Larry Hazard has Trotto up 97. 93. Yeah. Him, shots up. He, he's trying to kill him. Let him flow. Let him flow. Listen, we want to keep our title. We got to For Tony Harris, so this is the first time he has ever gone to round 11 in his pro career. 
Power punches, Charlo at 48%, Harrison at 40% over the first 10 rounds. Yeah, Harrison's never gone 11, but it looks like he wants to go 12. Yeah. So he's fighting again. A defensive fight here. He's not going to let Charlo land the big stuff. He's going to box and move. And I think, hope that the judges are giving him a the decision somehow, which is not going to happen. Unless something happens in the round. Right. Yeah, anything could happen in the next, you know, four or five minutes, but it doesn't look like it. Right, we talked about Harrison's defensive style tonight. He's averaging 31 points per round. And Estrella connects, and that's well below the average per round in his weight class. Charlo's stepping it up. He wants to get rid of Tony. He does. Um, but you saw how uh, Harrison made some really nice slick moves underneath, out and around, after he got hit with a couple of punches, which, you know, kept him in the game. Sometimes, and, sometimes when you're making those slick moves, you can get caught. You can. And because Charlo will turn southpaw and he'll hit you with a hook going out that way when you think you're safe. Yeah. He got hit with the right hand or the right hook as 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 uh, Charlo turns out ball though, which is really an athletic move. It's not easy to do. Right, but when you're doing it in the last round, sometimes your legs get out on you. They can, but uh, so far, Harrison's been surviving. One minute remaining in round 11. And to know Charlo, this is his fourth fight. He's gone past 10 rounds in his professional career. A first for Tony Harrison. See, when a guy moves that well, like that, oh, good left up with the ball. Oh, great left up with the ball, huh? Oh, I think that one hurt him a little bit. It hurt him, but he, he was pushing down on, on uh, Harrison's back. That's why he grabbed on. Harrison has to be careful to keep that left hand a little bit higher. Because Charlo's coming in with that right hand, that overhand right hand. By Harrison. Got a left jab. Body shot by Harrison. <laughs> now for 10 seconds. Look at the leverage on this left hook uppercut. And we have another look. Good punch caught right on the chin. One brother, Jamal Charlo, getting set. We face Matt Korobov. Both Charlos undefeated. Are you tired? No. We're going to get him then. Go he get him. Tired. He is tired and deep. Tired. Put the pressure. Look at EJ. Where are you at? You got him. Put the pressure on tight. Put the pressure on him. Put the pressure on him. Don't get him. Don't get him. Right the pressure on him. On top of him. He's not letting him out. Well, guys, in round 11, Carmel Trotto landed 18 punches. That's his high for any round tonight. And it goes to show you what a, it's really a, it, it's really been a real tactical fight here defensively. And, and you know, look, Tony Harrison's the one who's really slipped the pace of this whole fight down. So, and it's not not for lack of uh, Jamel Charlie trying. And by the way, he's coming out very very hard right now because his trainer Derek James was really excoriating him in the corner. They want a knockout and they want it now. So let's see what happens. This, this is where he has to take his time a little bit, move in with the jab, be a little bit patient, and let things open up for him. I don't know, patience hasn't really worked for him tonight, uh, Lennox. I, I think he's, he's really just got to put the full court press on him and let his hands go, uh, because I don't think Harrison's got the firepower to really 
But he doesn't want to sit on the ropes here, I'll tell you that. If he wants to make it to the final belt, it's the last spot he wants to be. Good left right by Charlie. Right. And the counter shot right. didn't work by Harrison. No, it didn't. One minute remaining in the 12th and final round here in Brooklyn. Charlo's in terrific shape. He's not even breathing hard. He's been throwing a lot of punches in this fight. <laughs> These two brothers are they're really, they're really well fine machine, like a tune machine. Oh, oh a great right hand. Oh, oh right, Jamal. I tell you, if Jamal really opened up, like you said, throw a whole bunch of punches in bunches, he may take him out. But look at this here. Now Harrison, with uh, 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 30 seconds, has to stand in his ground for the first time in the fight room. You know? Challenging him. Down to 20 seconds remaining. See, he should have been doing this for the past. I agree. He should have been doing that because that, that was two good accurate punches. Very effective. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Robin Taylor scores about 116 to 112. Judges Ron McNair and Julie Letterman both score about 115 to 113. All three in favor of the winner. And the new WC